a full return of all the soft plastics, including the VTS and Cram Shad series, new soft goods, backpacks and shoulder bags, and the official launch of our shop custom color in the Clash series baits. This is what's new this week at the Hookup Tackle DRT edition. Let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. What a oh, stud. Yeah. Look at that. That was sick. Cheers, my friends. Happy Sunday. All right, guys, some breaking news. This is what's in this week at the Hookup Tackle. What a beautiful post on fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that gut on that. That's a nice fish. Cool. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle at Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined this fine Sunday morning by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. Jeff? How's it going, buddy? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Passover. Happy Ramadan. Happy everything this weekend. A busy holiday weekend mm -hmm. for many people. Uh, I think we should have a drink to oh, celebrate. Would yes. you like to? Yeah. Yeah? Water. That's what Jesus would drink. That's probably what he Not drank true. when he came out of... Jesus created this for me to when drink. he came back from this the dead. This is the most delicious Orion. beer. Is a gift from God. Orion. You Cheers, sorry? my friends. Let's just stick to beer. Okay. Shall we? Maybe leave all the religious stuff to people that know what they're talking about. Yeah. Let's just enjoy a beautiful weekend. I hope you guys are having an amazing weekend. Look, if you are taking time away from your family mm. and your kids' Easter egg mm -hmm, hunt mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> good <thank> for you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, don't you're, get caught. You're welcome. That's probably what I should say. But cheers to you guys. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Big drop this weekend. Look, we wanted to take it a little bit easier this weekend and not have such a huge long episode so that you guys could spend some time uh, with your families. But a super exciting week some big drops and we are kind of titling this the drt episode we're going to also talk about some 316 baits because we got a huge resupply of those and figured that was fitting for this weekend mm -hmm. as well so let's just jump in to some good stuff jeff huge drt guy wow this is a dream come true we've this is i've been memeing this since for maybe almost three years now dude about this is DRTs all in the shop. yeah this is this color is almost well, over two years in the making. Yes. All right. Here we go, guys. The official drop of our shop custom color Saki Bomber in DRT hard bait. So we are doing this in four baits. We are doing this in the Tiny Clash. We are doing this in the Clash 9. We are doing this in the Clash Joker. And we are doing this in the Ghost as well. Now, we're going to go through and we're going to show you guys uh, these baits, but we're gonna also try to give you some insight on how to use these baits. Hopefully, you know, I don't know, maybe shed some light on how to catch more fish on hard baits. We're gonna talk about soft baits in a little bit. We're just gonna make this kind of a fun episode of cool new baits, but also some learning as well. Is that cool with you, Jeff? Oh yeah. All right, let's jump in and talk about this thing. Jeff, you throw DRT stuff all the time. What is it about, you know, the Clash 9? I started with this because this is what's always tied on to your rod, yeah. right? I think these two are probably the most yeah. famous ones, the Tiny so. Clash yeah. and the Clash 9. Yeah. So you're a huge Clash 9 guy. What is it about this bait that you love? While well, I take this out and we'll show the color. Well, what was nice about the K9 when I first got my hands on it is that I was throwing the 250 a lot, right? That was a very popular bait, and it still is. But this bait just was able to allow me to fish slightly bit different than I could with the 250. Well, the 250 covers a lot more water. I feel like the K9 was really built to fish around that super tight cover. Whether you're fishing a wall, you're fishing in between trees or down a dock or, you know, super tight stuff where you need the bait to kind of, you know, kind of like just 
glide almost in place. It's got a great walk the dog to it and you can really keep it in place for a very long time it feels like in that strike zone to get bites. And also the big thing that a lot of guys now know about is just the different modes you can fish it in. So out of the package it's going to come like this with the lip in and you've got a tail. The lip and tail you can interchange both different uh, tails you can flip it upside down you could take out the lip there's so many different ways you can fish this bait to accommodate wherever you're fishing at mm -hmm. and I think that's really really big that you can do so many different ways with just one bait simply by tail or lip and this is a concept that a lot of other brands have since I don't know if knocked off is the right word, but certainly borrowed inspiration yes. from, mm -hmm. right? To where things have now become interchangeable. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, like, even the tail, like, it comes like this, even simply by flipping it upside down. Changes the action completely. Changes the action. Going to, you know, a different style tail changes the action. Yep. Then all those actions have different actions. With the lip. Based or on without. With the lip, without the lip, yep. right? So, if assuming somebody is a beginner mm -hmm. with this bait. Yeah. What are some uh, tips that you can give them on uh, good places to start? Like give them, give them one or two modes that you definitely think they should try. So this mode that just straight out of the box, mm -hmm. this is like cranking mode for me personally. Okay. So you have the lip in here and the tail is kind of upside down. If you can see that it's kind of points up a bit. So this is lip in mode A. And this is basically a cranking mode and it's going to have a really hard side to side action like this in the water. And you can get it down anywhere from, you know, that four all the way down to maybe like eight feet on 20 pound fluorocarbon on like a long cast. So you can fish this in and around rocks. You can do like what they call a stop and go is where you crank it down, then you stop it, comes back up, go down, stop it, and then they'll bite it on that stop. So, I mean, it's a really fun way to fish, especially if you're around, you know, rocks and you know that they're eating something fast. You can fish it like this. If you... And I should note that these are the low float version. Low float, So they yes. do make a high float version mm -hmm. as well. These are all the low float version, which is, I would say, is the, the, the standard yeah. version. That's the staple version of all so. of these. Yeah. yeah. And then all I did was I changed the tail to now where it faces down. This is mode B. And now with this mode, you can still crank it, but it's not going to have that hard hitting vibration. Really what this one's made for is dead walking, where you can basically throw it up to a piece of cover and it'll just like go side to side like this. So the tail walk. section kind of stays in place with that front head. Yeah. Kind of just kind of dead just, walks mm -hmm. on itself. Yep. Just like that. And so it just keeps the bait in the strike zone much longer than you would with like a glide where you can just give it like, just like twitches and it stays in. So this is mode B, lip in, and that's the dead walk. Okay. And then all you have to do is take out the lip here, mm -hmm. just like that. You kind of go at like an angle. And then this is my favorite, which is just the glide mode. So mode B, lip out, and this thing has a killer gliding action, I'd say to it. and. Hold that for two seconds. Yep, I got it. And while Jeff's grabbing that, I will say that this, you know, this is how I see Jeff fish it most often. Yeah. It's amazing how fast you can fish this mm -hmm. thing, but it's amazing how accurate yeah, very you precise. can fish this thing. Like this yeah. is just one of those baits that's dependable when you move it. You know, some glide baits just are really consistent mm -hmm. and others just, you never really know where right. they're going. Yeah. Yeah. So... If you're going to fish it in this mode, I highly recommend you using a a like zappy board weight. This is the Gancraft. I recommend the two gram. So it's still going to float. It's just going to be a little bit slower. And so if it floats like this, kind of tail up. So once you add that two grams, I you're able to kind of let the bait hang on the glide. Mm. So if you glide it now, if you glide it it'll rise up pretty quickly. But if you put that two gram on there, yep. it'll glide and then kind of stay there for a second and then go up. So just adding a little bit of weight gets this thing to really, really fish. Where really, are you really putting well. the weight? I'm putting the weight just up here in the front. Just okay. right here is perfect. Yep. 
Um, I like it up here. And then if you wanted to even add more weight, you can add like another one gram back here to get it almost like a suspend. Okay. And you can really keep it in place and get those super long lives, pause it. Now slowly float up or suspend depending on water temperature. What are you doing with hooks? Are you leaving what comes on it? Or are you changing them out? Uh, so with hooks, the hooks that come with it are fine. I know guys like to run them. I personally always switch out my hooks. I've gone through a bunch of different hooks. I've gone through owner ST35s that we have here at the shop. I've done 45 owners as well. Um, I know we have some DRT shark hooks as well that I will put on here like a, a size one is perfect on this bait. So it just kind of depends on your preference of hooks. The hooks that come with it, they're fine. I just like to always swap out stuff. Now with the snap and the ring up in the front, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's too long and too much action okay. on the side to side. Yep. So normally I replace this with just a simple snap. So you take both rings off. Yeah, I take the split ring yep. and the ring attached to it yep. off and then I put a snap on there and I feel like I get the best action with it. Yep, like a size three? Yeah, like snap. a size three decoy egg snap that yep. we also Something have like here that. at the yep. shop. Okay. So that's basically the, the modes that I use with the K9. Yeah. I know there's tons of other ones For you sure. can try. So depending on where you guys are, you may find that you want the bait deeper. I mean, play with it. That's the fun part about these baits yeah. is that they're so fully customizable. Uh, and then using some of these little tips like the boards and different stuff can, can change the action yeah. for you guys as well. Um, 20 pound? Yeah, 20 pound fluorocarbon is money. You can yeah. do 20 mono, you can do 25 mono, 25 fluorocarbon. Yeah. Just don't overdo it. Um, like 30 pounds, way too much. Definitely yeah. anywhere in that 20 to 25, either copoly, mono, or fluorocarbon will be fine. You're good. Now, the nice thing about a K9 mm -hmm. is that they're only four ounces. Oh, yeah. So, so you're like... getting a nine inch bait where, yeah. you know, a nine inch slide summer 250 is six ounces. Yeah. It's only four ounces. Yeah, it's pretty light. It's a pretty easy bait to throw. Yes. So this is a, this is a really just like kind of perfect glide bait mm -hmm. for this size yeah, yeah. without having to go too big, yeah. moves yeah. very easy, lots of things you can do with and it. And what's nice is like, you know, it's big at nine inches, mm -hmm. but I've taken this to urban ponds and I've caught in one pounders, two pounders, three pounders on it. Yep. And I've also caught eight pounders on it. Right. So like this bait, it's versatile anywhere and everywhere. Whether yep. you're fishing a pond, whether you're fishing a lake or a river or stream or whatever, it is you're gonna catch fish on it, trust me. Like, it is a fantastic lure. Yeah. So let's jump into the color really quick. So Saki Bomber is a color that most of you are probably familiar with. We make it in the Tekel Kick Knocker yep. as well. It's basically a color that I borrowed inspiration from Lucky Craft, Ghost Minnow, and Mega Bass Mashup. Mm -hmm. I kind of stole the best of both worlds, combined it into one color. So essentially what it is, is it's a matte finish transparent bait fish color yeah. is what it is. So you're gonna get that fully matte finish, uh, which really stands out in the water, but it's completely transparent as well. So what you end up getting is you get a bait that has a lot of almost glow to it mm -hmm. under the water in low light conditions. So if you're fishing shade pockets, if you're fishing first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, it's a bait that stands out, but because it's transparent, it also kind of diminishes the profile. If this was full matte, it would be this big profile, like a full solid body, it'd be a big profile moving mm -hmm. through. But what you end up seeing in the water, and you guys will notice when you're fishing it, you kind of see that back line, and you see that lateral line, and the rest of it kind of like, kind of goes away. So it's it's there, yeah. it's noticeable, but it's not overly intrusive. And that's what kind of makes it such a cool color, whether it's in the kick knocker, or in this case, in the DRT. Thoughts on the color? I yeah. think it's killer. Yeah. And I was fishing it yesterday and it's it's pretty money. Like I wouldn't use it in like um dirty water. I think anything under two foot it's might not do well, but I think in that you know, three to seven foot visibility, I think it's gonna be absolutely killer. Yeah, and one other thing with matte finishes, is there's a lot of parts of the country, like even out here in Arizona, like if we fish the Colorado River, Yeah, it could be a sunny, hot, calm day, and they want matte finish. Mm -hmm. So there's some times where they just eat matte yeah. well. But I think where you guys are really gonna find this good is in that lower light times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys are gonna smoke them on it. Talk so, about that logo on the head too. 
yeah, there you go. So just so you always remember uh, where you got it from. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hookup logo on uh, on the skull there. So really stoked to get these in your guys' hands. Uh, so that's the Clash Nine. Now I'm gonna preface this. These are probably flying out of here pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. I... This is possibly, or I should say, probably uh, like a one-time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's not necessarily like this is the one and only time that these are ever going to come, but I'm telling you, this is almost like this is over two years in the making to get this batch. So I don't know if or when these are going to show again. So if these speak to you, make sure you grab them. Yeah. Okay. Make sure make sure you scoop them up. So there is the Clash 9. Let's run through these other baits really quick yep. too, Jeff, because yep. this is great insight uh, for a lot of guys. All right, dude, let's talk about this one. This is the... Uh, TK or yep. the Tiny Clash. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are dropping down in size here, dropping down in weight. When are you choosing a Tiny Clash over a K9, or you know, how is this uh, falling into your arsenal? So when I I like to fish my Tiny Clash the most, actually at my urban spots. Okay. And I fish mine primarily as like a um, I just need a smaller bait to get in even smaller spaces so i basically fish them very similar to each other i really fish the tiny clash more with the lip in with the mode a and i get a dead walk out of it okay or i'll add a v-tail to it and add a different lip to get like a a wobble and roll which as you know the japanese they really like that wobble and roll technique right yeah and you can get a great action on this one with it and it's just a really good size for when they're keyed in on some of that smaller like thread print or grizzard shad i think it's absolutely killer so i fish mine mostly at urban spots you can fish it same way as we talked about with the canine you can also get it to glide lip comes in and out yep. tail same comes thing. in and out so Different same tails, interchangeable like yep. i will also add instead of a two gram i'll add a one gram to the tiny clash got it Just and that little... still keeps it floating yep. but even a slower float yeah, so again basically. these are going to be low float which is a slow float yeah. but you're just even slowing it slowing down it down more. even yeah. more yeah and then if you're going to do it in glide mode you just need to fish it faster it's going to be very very erratic so yep. when i fish that tiny clash in the glide mode it's when i'm actively seeing fish chasing shad or trout or something like that and i can fire that thing in and i'm fishing it really really quick with quick little jerks and, yep. and speed ups they're going to crush it yeah. like it's full speed like they blast the thing out of the water yeah. so it's a really fun bait, and I know most guys like the Tiny Clash. Yeah, because it's an easy one to throw. Yes. It doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, it catches fish in all kinds of different waters. Like Kenta won uh, James River yeah. last year, right? Utilizing and he one of those. Utilizing a Tiny Clash yep. as part of it, right? So, like, I know a lot of Elite Series guys are, Chomping up you the know, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're super stoked uh, about this bait. So, this would be a really good, just easy to throw. Easy. You know, really great as the water temp warms too. I know a lot of guys like this as a summer bake because they yep. work it real fast. Yep. So uh, that's the tiny clash. Then we jump over to this guy. This one's probably less known mm -hmm. because there's hardly ever any of these available. Nobody ever talks about it. But right. I've I've talked to a lot of guys that fish them. Mm -hmm. They love the Joker. They say it's their favorite wake bait. It's got a fat profile. Yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one out here so we can we can look at it a little closer. So this is the Clash Joker. Mm -hmm. They, they make, pretty much just call him a Joker. Yeah, basically yeah. Joker. There's two versions. There's a rattling version. There's a non-rattling. The one that we have is non-rattling, mm -hmm. so it's completely silent. But the weight that this bait gives off because of the profile is amazing. It pushes so much water, and it looks really really good. Same thing with this one. You can remove the tail. You can flip the tails upside down. The, t uh, the lip also comes out so you can almost get like a walking action on the water, on top of the water. And then with the lip in, it's just going to have a crazy waking action to it. Yeah. So it's fat. It yeah. is extremely it's fat. fat. It's a super cool bait. It's kind of, uh, if you guys like catching them on like a, a rat like type body. That's it. This is kind of a really cool kind of bridging that gap between like a bait fish pattern and something like wider. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are gonna have a ton of fun. Yeah, on this guys, thing. guys that fish it, I talk to them and yeah. I'm like, dude, I get some gnarly blobs on this thing. Yeah, because it's a big fat profile, and I think the fish think like, I've got to kill this thing. Yep, yep. <laughs> so same thing, interchangeable tails, yep. 
yep. interchangeable lip. You can customize it to your liking. Uh, but really, this is one that you probably aren't going to mess with, like boards and weight strips no. and stuff. It's it's just going to be the action that you impart or don't impart mm -hmm. on and around the surface. Yeah. Okay. So wake bait slash top water. Yes. Really is is where this guy is going to shine mm -hmm. for you guys, and that's the Joker. And then finally, this ginormica. Yeah. The Clash. Talk Ghost. to me about the Clash Ghost. So the Clash Ghost, it's a massive lure. It's 8.8 .8 ounces. And depending on the tail that you go with, it's like 13 inches or 14 inches. It's a big, big bait. This is a bait that basically, I know a lot of guys that fish it and I know a lot of guys that catch on it and I know a lot of guys that don't catch on it. I'm one of those guys that I don't fish it very often because for me to get bit on this bait, the fish have to be juiced. Yeah. And like, big ones have to be juiced, which out here, it's very rare for them. Like the times I would throw this is like when I'm actively seeing them chase trout, like on the surface, like it's go time, they're full speeding and they're big fish chasing. I've got buddies out in Texas where when they're the big girls, like those eight to like 12 pounders are like wolfed up together yep. and they're chasing gizzard chat. Yep. My buddy, that's Jared, where this bait is going that's where it to shines. shine. That's yeah. where Especially shines. in this coloration, yes. it's going to be for your gizzard shad guys. Yeah, so 100%. I'm not, you know, dude, if you're a trout guy, I mean, buy, yeah. it. buy it, please. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, please try it. But the guys that are really going to get juice shad. on this color yeah. are like shiner guys, gizzard shad guys, yeah. you know, when they're packed up like that. Yeah, and it's just, there's pads on the inside that you can add and adjust. Mm -hmm. You can add weights in the back and the front, different tails, different lips these days as well. So it has almost the same versatility as that K9 does, where you can change it to exactly how you think is gonna work best for your waters. And I've been experimenting with a couple that I've had. I've had no pads in, I've had pads in, I've had different tails in, I've tried lips, I've tried the different line ties. And so there's just so many different ways. And the biggest thing that DRT always advocates is just experimenting. Mm. This is a bait that you can do so much to. They want you to experiment with the baits. Right. So no matter how crazy you might think your idea is, they want you to try it and you should be able to actually do it with these baits. So the Clash Ghost, it's a perfect example of you got to figure out when to throw it and how you think you can catch fish on it with this way that you set it up as. Yes. So just to spec it out, just so you guys know, it's 370 millimeters uh, and it's 235 grams. Okay, so this is gonna be a big one. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be much harder to throw, Very. but this is for you guys that are, are serious about it. Uh, we did inspect this one out. It's eight inches from tail to, mm. to tip, yep. uh, three ounces. Yeah, so three super ounces. easy. So it's, it's gonna light. throw just kind of like a rack yeah. would throw, yeah, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so there you go, guys. There is the lineup. Uh, by the way, these are gonna range anywhere from 94 bucks on the Tiny Clash up to I think 349, yes, 349. on the ghost. So, uh, you know, just depending on what you wanna do, I'm super stoked to get these. So DRT, thank you uh, for getting this badge to us. We're all stoked for it. I know you guys are gonna catch a ton of fish on it. I know it's a brand we don't talk about a lot because there's just so <laughs> little supply. It's just one of those brands that just, yeah, you know, there's just not, much production right <laughs> so take advantage while we have some scoop these up enjoy a sake bomber drt hookup collab available now all right guys and while we are on hard baits before we jump over here there are spare tails available as well for the clash nine and the tiny and then we also brought in uh so these are new to us the drt sharks hooks so these are available in, in three sizes size one size one aught, size two aught. Uh, Jeff, you mentioned using a size one for the K9. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where are you putting the one aught or the two aught? Or are you just using them for, they, mm -hmm. they don't have to be for DRT baits, of no, course. They don't have put them to. on whatever right. bait you want yeah. to put them on. Yeah. So, um, talk to me about the shark's hooks. What's different about a DRT hook versus say an Owner ST35? So what's nice is uh, with the shark's hooks, the biggest thing with them is the out bar. Mm instead of the bar being on the inside of the bend of the hook, it's mm -hmm. on the outside. So a lot of times when you're fishing a glide bait, there are times when the line will wrap up on the hook and get on the inside. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but since the barb isn't on the inside of the hook, you can kind of like just pop the line off. And also with hooking fish too, it pins them pretty good as well. Yeah. So the hook's super sharp. They're strong. They don't really bend out. And you got the out barb. So I like the one on, or the size one on the canine. I think it's a perfect size for that bait. Yep. And it works really well. For the other sizes, Ghost. Yeah. Uh, the new frenzy, yep. the mother, the hinkles. Yeah. Feel free baits. to use them even on slide summers. Like whatever you guys are using yeah. for a, a size one, one aught, two aught. Uh, it's just giving you another option. Basically. So yeah. there you go. The the sharks hooks mm -hmm. from DRT. Those are also available now. Yep. Yes. That would help it sink. <laughs> yeah. If Very you want to want a sinking plus one that hangs up. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> fast sink. So sick. All right, guys, let's jump over to some soft pods for a minute, and then we're going to talk about some bags, and we'll keep going down the rabbit hole. So uh, we brought these in uh, not too long ago, no. maybe, I don't know, six, eight weeks ago mm -hmm. or so, and they evaporated out of here. So we got them to do another batch for us, so if you guys uh, are maybe don't want to spend $120 on a DRT lure, but you want to you know, give something a shot, these might be right up your alley. So this is the VTS. Now there's two sides in the VTS. There's a VTS seven, which I have in my hands. There's also a VTS five, a little bit different baits. They're not just the same, just with the different sizing, a little bit different. Uh, but the VTS seven is a super sick bait. Uh, lots of stuff you can do with it. Jeff, I know we talked about this before, so let's, we'll just recap yeah, yeah. Uh, where you like to use them. How are you fishing the VTS seven? I'll Wait, take one out. Weightless spring hook. Okay. It's perfect spring lock hook. Weightless. Make sure that it's weightless, guys. The plastic is pretty heavy, so mm -hmm. like what would you say that weighs? Like Yeah, this is maybe this is an ounce, ounce probably. Uh, an ounce? I yeah. would yeah, this is a lot. So this it's is the salt heavy. in version. Oh, okay. Uh yeah. you're gonna be able to throw this for I mean no forever. Problem. Yeah. Right? And it's it's designed in kind of that V shape. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you want to use that weightless is to let the bait do what it was designed to do. Yeah, because the tail the action really is in the tail and it needs to be very weightless and free moving to get that tail to kind of quiver and and, and do get the right motion that you're looking for. Yep. Basically, there's a ton of different ways you can fish it. You can fish it, cast and burn it. You can twitch it just like a fluke. A lot of guys like to just burn it, stop it, burn it, stop it. And it's a good one for fishing around grass, around docks, stuff like that, where you'd fish a normal fluke. You can right. skip it as well under things, around yep. toolies. It's just a really nice little bait. Yeah. So I know a lot of you guys catch a lot of fish on it. If you haven't tried it yet, this is a really easy one, I would say, Super. to implement. Yeah. yeah. So that's the VTS-7. Then they made a smaller version, which is the VTS-5. And by the way, they're available in a, in a ton of cool colors. Yeah. Right? So check check out the colors. They're, they're all online. Uh, but here's the VTS-5, a much smaller version. How are you implementing this one, Jeff? I am, I mean, you could do this kind of the same thing. You yeah. have like a spring lock hook, but I think most guys nowadays, they throw like a little ball head on it um, and give it just a little bit different action. You can also just put it uh, as like an A-rig trailer. I've seen guys have been using it for it too. Yep. Just small, like little jig heads and trailers and stuff like that. There's a lot of different ways you can fish this one as well. It just gives off a slightly bit different action because of the shape's different. Right. So it's even more subtle. Yes than okay. the other one but the whole key to these baits is that little that little quiver yeah. at the tail yeah. this one's got a little wider head mm -hmm. so if you do want to rig it like on a ball head it's got the plastic yeah. to be able to handle it it's got these little stabilizer fins on the back which keeps it upright so if you do kind of do that you know jerking motion or winding and pausing it's still going to kind of keep that kind of horizontal look so uh just a really cool i mean dude you could throw this in a pond from sure i mean oh, dude, anywhere's gonna eat a, a yeah. size like this so just a great one especially this time of year shad spawn coming up yep. right a lot of fish are just moving up to the shallows they're gonna eat these things then there are two cramp shads so there is a cramp shad fat and there is a regular cramp shad now, the regular cramp shad, kind of designed as kind of like a, a BW rig kind yeah. of bait. Yep. Put it on a ball head, mm -hmm. swim it in. Yeah. Pretty, pretty Killer. simple. Yeah. Uh, again, experiment with it, try some different things. Um, but really, that kind of straight retrieve yep. is, yeah. is what's so good about this. It's just, it's got a little subtle rock mm -hmm. and a very subtle little tail. Yeah. It's not a big exaggerated movement. It's just a cool little bait. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm seeing a lot of guys throwing on A rigs mm -hmm. and different mm -hmm. stuff. 
The cram shad fat, you can do the same thing with. Uh, this is a fatter version all the way around. This also makes a great like walking, walking bait. bait. Yeah. So, you know, kind of designed, I would say, as a uh, paddle tail or mm -hmm. even like kind of a, a back glide kind of bait because it's so wide, but it's an amazing like walking bait. So once you rig this properly, and again, weightless hook is yeah. going to be the key to this so that you're not putting too much weight on it and you let the bait do what it was designed to do, uh, you can really walk the dog under the water incredibly well uh, and, they, and they smoke it. So there you go, full resupply, all colors are back from DRT and the soft plastics. Those are all available now as well. All right guys, some other exciting soft goods. Now Jeff, as we explored Japan a couple months ago, mm. it was really cool to see some of the DRT soft goods, mm -hmm. backpacks, shoulder bags, like it's it's definitely you know their baits are super hot yep. over there yep uh, but they make amazing soft goods yeah as well. Why do you think? It seems like Japan really cares about their bags. Well, I feel like America doesn't. Well, I think that's changing at least here, yeah. at least to our audience. Mm -hmm. But as far as a country wide, I think it's the same as the apparel. Mm -hmm. I think the Japanese angler wants highly functional fishing apparel. Yeah while being fashionable uh, they yeah. because think about it, like even a lot of the guys that we saw going fishing right oh, yeah. they're going fishing but they had to take a train to get there yeah which means they had to <laughs> be around other people yeah they had to walk through stations yep. right i see a hot chick yeah. on the way right you got a train <laughs> who knows who you're gonna meet might see another hot chick right you fish all day you got to do it all over again yep. So you kind of don't want to look like a loser a fisherman, yeah. right? You want to look cool. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's kind of where, you know, the the bag mm -hmm. trend in Japan really is big, yeah. right? Is that they're both function and fashion yeah, together, at the same time. which is really cool. So uh, this is the DRT backpack. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to probably jump on it just because it's a DRT mm -hmm. bag. Uh, but even if you're not like a swim bait guy, this is a super sick bag. Yeah. So it's got all the you know traditional things that you would expect to have in a high-end bag as far as meshing and padding. The padding on these shoulder straps is just insane. Uh, they're ridiculous. Like it's probably the most padded bag I've Shoulders. ever seen. So if you're like me, and you insist on overloading every you bring bag you own. pounds of this stuff. Right. Uh, this this could be a really good option for you. Right. There's uh, there's holders on the side that you could put a water bottle in. Mm -hmm. You could also use it as a rod rod holder. Yeah. So it's got straps here. So if you wanted to put like a tube or mm -hmm. a, a multi piece rod, mm -hmm. you could and attach it here. There's multiple compartments on the inside. All of the compartments have. Also pads and inner sleeves. So you could drop like your swim baits in one. You've got another big compartment here. And again, they're they're padded. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got extra protection there. You've got larger pockets on here that you could drop like hooks and easy accessories that you need. You've got this little pocket here that unfolds and more zippers. Like you could literally space. make this a 50 pound bag in no time. A lot of space. Right? So tons of space in there. It's got a waterproof bottom, which is nice. So nice. if you need to take the bag off and set it down mm -hmm. and the ground's wet, it's not going to seep in. Uh, so all in all, just super, That's it's a just a super bag. dope bag, yeah. right? So they're available in three colors. So you've got this black, you've got this cool like mountain camo, and then you've got this cool like kind of gray mountain camo. All right, so you've got the three colors uh, all in the same bag. Now again, this is the first time they've ever been available, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know how often we're gonna be able to keep it in stock, probably not often. I don't think they make them that often. So again, if you're a bag connoisseur, uh, I would definitely pick these up, but wall supplies last. The DRT backpacks are available now. And then if you're more of a small profile bag guy, uh, there is also a shoulder bag. So this uh, shoulder bag or sling pack, right? Uh, so you're getting a lot of that same idea as in the backpack, just in a smaller profile, right? So you've got the internal compartments, you've got the padding on there. So lots of room in here for you to really store tons of stuff. You've got an outside pocket, molly webbing on the side. Again, water bottle holder or rod holder, depending on how you want to turn it in. So just a really cool kind of bomber bag, stylish, 
right? And those are gonna be available in that cool kind of camo hit. So uh, there you go, guys. Amazing stuff from DRT this week. I hope you enjoy. Jeff, let's jump over to some 316 and talk about some soft yep. swim baits, cool? All right, guys, let's talk about 316 Lure Co. Now, we have sold 316 really since the beginning mm -hmm. of the hookup. It has been a while since we have had a good supply of this, so major, major shipment uh, showed up, pretty much resupplying the whole thing. I'm just gonna take advantage of it being, you know, 316, it being a religious there weekend. You go. It's a great time to just give you guys a recap uh, and talk about some of the restocks that we see in this. But if there's any 316, you know, paddle tail or soft bait you've been looking for, uh, they should be available now. Now, the Rising Sun, mm. okay, this is, uh, one of the OGs yes. in the line through paddle tail world, uh, still one of the best ones. Yeah. Consistency, you know, Mickey does an amazing pour. Uh, talk to me about, talk to me about Rising Suns, Jeff. So, <clears throat> like you said, it's an OG, mm -hmm. and anybody and everybody that has ever fished one loves them. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different ways you can fish them. They have like a slow floating version. They also have like a top hook version. Yep. And basically, with like the normal version, the line through version uh -huh. that's on the bottom, you just creep it below the surface. Yeah. And the fish just come up and destroy it. Yeah. So I like to fish the um, the top hook and just fish it on the bottom. I went out to Texas a couple of years ago, and the first night of fishing, one I caught a fish on it. Oh, and, I was, oh. and I was like, "Yep." Yeah, so here's the top hook version, and they're yeah. available in different sizes too. So yeah. uh, you've got six inch, you've got eight inch, you've got uh, five inch, right? So you've got different sizes too, depending on where you are. Just so you guys know, like Jeff's holding uh, just a traditional line through, and it's got the the hole from the nose coming out the bottom. Mm -hmm. The top hook gives you that same ability, so you can go in the nose and out the bottom, or you can go out the top yep. of the bait yep. and put your treble here so that you can kind of drag this along the, the bottom, bottom or up and over trees yep. and not be snagging on that. Uh, I interrupted your Texas story. Oh, no, I was just fishing it on the bottom and I caught uh, a nice fish one night fishing the right in the sun while other things weren't getting bites. Yeah. So it's just something different than like what normal guys are fishing. Most guys aren't fishing paddle tails on the bottom too. Right. Which is big. Most guys will fish like, you know, your vortex style, um, boot tail style down on the bottom. But yep. with this, it gives you different options, different colors, different sizes. Cheap. They're yeah. they're for very, a paddle tail yeah. and for How a hand well pour, yeah. right? They're, they're very they're, cheap. They're a good price. And so, they're durable as well. Great bang for the buck. Tons of good colors. I'm not going to sit here and go through all the colors, but anywhere from hitches mm -hmm. to trout, shiners, shiners, trouts, yeah. you name right? It. Chartreuse shads, whites. I mean, they've got the whole gamut of colors. Uh, so, again, just kind of pick the colors. If you get a fish in smaller water, you guys are going to love the oh, smaller yeah. ones. Killers. Right? For bigger lakes, you know, the six inch and the eight inch are, are super dope. No brainers. Easy yeah. to cast, uh, easy to use. So, there you go. Rising Suns, completely back in stock across the board. And then they also make weedless versions. Oh yeah. Okay, so these guys are gonna be great fishing on like an owner beast hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so essentially the same the same bait. Yeah. Uh, just not with the uh, line through version in there. Now, these for me, back when I was fishing Mexico a lot, mm -hmm. these were like the staple, Yeah. right? And this was kind of like before there was a mag draft freestyle. Now was this it. was kind of the deal that everybody sought to use because yeah. it was kind of like the og of this style bait mm -hmm. too uh and it does have kind of a guiding little hole there that you know like that's where you want your hook to come in and out right uh just a great one for skipping yeah it's a solid body so it maintains its form really good you could skip it you can fish it slow on the bottom uh just all the things that you would do with a weedless versus a line through gives you some extra flexibility so those return as well from 316. All right, and then finally, while well, we're talking about line through paddle tails from 316, we also see a return of the 316 shad, bluegill, and crappie. And I'll show each one to you here. Now, these are five inch line throughs, really designed to mimic the movement uh, and profile of shad, bluegill, or crappie. Now, what's cool about these uh, over, say, like the Rising Sun, the Rising Sun really shines 
is like a slow, methodical, mm -hmm. like it's one of those baits that the fish eat. Like even if they follow it back, there's nothing really that they find wrong with that bait. So it's great at a slower speed. The shad, you can fish at a faster pace. So you're gonna see they're softer. Uh, you can really kind of get that really tighter shad movement to it. Uh, they've got a bigger tail back there. So you're just gonna get a little different kick out of it, a little different motion. This would just be a great one to throw around, uh, you know, sh shad spawn. Anytime there's full size thread fins mm -hmm. or, you know, gizzards in an area, uh, this would be great. A bunch of cool colors in that as well. This time of the year, the bluegill is a no brainer. Okay, so a similar shape, a similar design to the shad, but they've incorporated a little different tail, some different fins to give it more of a bluegill swim, a bluegill profile. So those are available as well. And then also the crappie is also available. So again, just a slight little tweak, but mainly coloration there on that guy. So if you guys are fishing around, you know, I mean, crappie move up at the same time. So you've got some different options there, some great line throughs. Uh, so take advantage. It's been a while since we've had so much inventory of 316, so it's a great time to stock up. Uh, those are all available now. All right, guys, so that is going to be a wrap, except for one more little thing. I want you guys to go enjoy your weekend with your family, uh, but it's impossible to do Easter without an Easter egg hunt. Mm. Well, except that eggs are too damn expensive. Mm -hmm. Right? So instead of Easter eggs, we're gonna do an Easter box there you hunt. Go. So we have put together a special box of hide up uh, and uh, Sawamura soft plastics. Now we've done these kind of teaser box before, right? Uh, where you buy a product, get a cool box. We've gone through and we've put together a $400 box for you guys. So it's a sampling of a bunch of different plastics. So it could be, you know, plastics from Hide Up, which is an amazing brand out of Japan. A lot of you guys have been asking for these to come. We just haven't had time to, to inventory them. So we're gonna box it again, right? So you've got some Hide Up soft plastics. You've got one of the coolest, you know, paddle tails uh, in the game, the one-up shads in here. There's a combination of a bunch of stuff in here. $400 worth of stuff. We're gonna do it uh, for a hundred bucks. So 75% off if you can find them. So we have hidden a hundred of these boxes just around the website randomly. So if you guys want to go on a little Easter egg hunt, if you see it and it shows availability, you can click on it and buy it at 75% off and it's all yours. So have some fun with it. The Easter egg hunt is live. Good luck, you guys. All right, Jeff, and that is a wrap. What a crazy what's new. Easy. Unbelievable. Right? Some DRT. DRT. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? Right? So cheers, my friends. Happy whatever it is that you're celebrating this weekend. I hope you're having an amazing time with your family and your friends. Maybe some of you guys are celebrating by fishing, right? Or watching some games or drinking some beer. Uh, again, thank you guys for taking time out of your schedules to give us time on your Sunday mornings. Uh, we love you. We appreciate it. Thank you for the business. If you have questions on anything that we covered, Drop it down below, I will get answers for you. And of course, Jeff will put links to everything. Good luck, I hope you guys all get a sake bomber uh, while we have them. I'm super stoked for you guys to put it in action. And please tag us uh, as you're catching fish because I would love to see the journey uh, that you guys have with sake bomber. So until next week, my friends, have a wonderful weekend. Hug your family, go catch a big fish. Cheers, peace out. Jeff, happy Sunday, sir. Yeah.